Hi, everyone, and welcome to Chair Yoga. This practice today is going to be one of uh, a cooling practice. It's very warm where I'm located, and I imagine several of, of you may be experiencing that as well. So whereas oftentimes I try to develop a practice of the movement, the asana part of our yoga experience as being, you know, challenging, um, strengthening and, and, you know, trying various things that kind of do create heat in the body. This is not going to be the case today. Today is going to be more restorative and reflective. Um, I'm going to start with just an idea of that, of like, how, how does yoga serve us in those kinds of ways? I'm drawing from a book uh, that I've come to know and love by Deborah Adele, uh, one of the many, many beautiful yoga kind of, I call them experts. We all want to live well, let's face it. At the end of the day, it's not how much you have or how much you have accomplished that counts. What matters is how well you have participated in your own life, both the ordinary routines and the extraordinary surprises. It's how you feel inside when you lay your head on the pillow. Does a feeling of joy and well-being accompany you to bed? Or does your head touch the pillow with thoughts of anger, bitterness, helplessness, frustration, self-disappointment, or whiny complaints. Yoga in its wholeness helps us gain the skill and awareness to choose our attitude, to choose what we think, and to choose what we do. The result of a skillfully lived life is nothing less than joy, not the kind that comes when things are going our way and disappears just as quickly, but the kind that bubbles up from within, the kind of joy that comes from our own sense of mastery in life, that no matter what life brings, we are ready. Maybe there is nothing to figure out ahead of time. There is only a life to live well or not. Which are you choosing for yourself? So let's begin with a cooling breath practice as part of our transition. So I want you to just sit up tall, come forward on your chair, put the block between your thighs. Maybe you take a cleansing breath, a big couple breaths to sort of get you settled and feel like you're oh, very much aware of your breath because of those deeper you know, cleansing kind of noisy breaths. And then let it settle into what feels like a very, um, I was gonna say normal, you know, routine sort of breath awareness. It's not very strong, it's not weak, it's just somewhere in the middle. And that you're letting that exhale come out of your mouth like you're blowing out a candle. So there's still a fullness of breath, don't misunderstand that. It's still a full breath in and a full breath out. But the breath comes out of the mouth like you're blowing out a candle. And throughout the practice today, I'm going to encourage you to use your exhale through your mouth as often as you think of it and as often as it feels good and right for you. And that will just help us in its own way to keep the body a little cooler. Palms on your lap, I'm going to ask you to make a particular mudra. So take a look. We're grabbing, we're going to fold all the fingers in except for the pinky finger and the thumb is kind of holding those in. So it's just this little cute little pinky extension. This is called the, the gesture of the inner smile. So we're gonna cultivate that joy that our mindfulness practice helps us or promises that perhaps we can achieve. Let's start with bringing ourselves into this awareness of the inner smile. So hands on the lap, so you can just lay them on your lap in any way that feels natural for you. Eyes are closed. We're breathing that cooler style of breath all the way in and out. And maybe you're going to also offer up that turn of your mouth. So not only is your hand in the gesture of the inner smile, but you actually put that smile on your face. And remember, that's a smile for you. That's a smile for you so that you can feel what it does to you when you do hold that. And that you're, you know, joining me in this intention of mindfulness so that we can become skillful in our life, choosing how we respond. And that the result of that is joy. So 
stay with it. One more full breath, out through the mouth. Let's open the eyes. And now I'm in the chair, we are joining now. Be sure you're very far forward on the chair. So you, yes, you've got plenty of support, no question about that, but also that you're not, I mean, I want you to be able to move your legs easily and it's gonna really serve us better if right off from the start, you're very far forward, mindfully far forward in your chair. Squeezing that block just enough that it keeps it there. Let's just begin the movements that we're so familiar with to lift up and down. I'm going to include now the use of some mantras that's repeated words just to kind of keep us focused. Ananda, Ananda, just like it sounds, just make that sound. Ananda lifts us up. Hum, H U M, hum brings us down. Ananda, hum, this is a mantra of joyfulness. It's considered, I. it's like claiming bliss, claiming joy. Ananda, and this is to yourself. So those are the words you're whispering to yourself as you breathe in and out through the mouth. So you're just feeling this ananda, the flow of ananda, the flow of bliss, hum, claiming it for yourself. Keep your spine, you know, strong and erect. And the movement is around the shoulder chest, the shoulder, uh, the armpit chest. Ananda, hum. Couple more. Lift up now, palms together, look up. Exhale, bow to your own heart. Inhale, back up and hold that. Palms together if you can, if fingertips works better because your shoulders are a little bit, you know, sensitive today, just not kind of, not very cooperative. Palms together means you're, you're really tapping into a pretty full range of movement or palms apart because I'm not just not there yet. So you, you choose. Arms up in the air, palms together if you can. Push your feet to the floor now. So now we feel like we're giving ourselves a full body stretch. We're stretching through the whole length of our body, even though we're sitting in a chair. Hold your head softly so your neck is not all tense. There's a softness about it, a naturalness about the way your head is being propped up. Inhale here, exhale, bend those elbows and invite this slight back bend. Palms come together on your inhale, exhale, invite a slight back bend. What I'm focusing on today is this, you know, I've been able to identify, I think through, through teachers that I see, um, various ways that we can approach, you know, what does, in, what does yoga promise us? What are the, what are the sort of guarantees or uh, that we can expect, you know, from a practice of yoga? And I'm leaning on today to bring our mind and body together, number one. Number two is improving posture. We can do that on a cooling practice, improve our posture. And unblocking energy's flow. So that's, got, that's a, the experience of letting go. So maybe you're feeling some of that. Maybe you can feel by doing this little back bend that you're bringing yourself maybe into awareness of better posture about the way you hold your shoulders and back. Let's bring palms together overhead, take a pause now. And then when we release them, start to feel that feeling very slowly now of letting go because your arms have been up, your shoulders have been engaged. So very slow. So this is that physical embodied experience of letting go. 
Arms are gonna land right alongside the chair's frame. Pull those arms back, let your chest bone come forward to move into your cow pose, the extension of the spine. Inhaling and exhaling right here. In a minute, we're gonna come into the vinyasa of this. Now see if you can feel that softness of your neck so that it doesn't feel tight. It doesn't feel like you're um, overdoing that your head is naturally elevated at the top of your spine because it's properly placed. Good, now let's move into the, to the cat pose. So that means your hands are gonna come to your kneecaps. You're gonna pull your belly in like crazy so you feel a roundness, a dome shape in the very center of your back. Invite the roundness through your, low, through your lumbar spine and around the shoulder area, which is pretty easy access and really trying to really invite and include some effort in rounding the dome shape into the middle of your back as well. Pulling in the belly button, like you're really trying to skinny up your belly is a very good technique here. All right, let's time for the vinyasa then, inhaling into that arched back, exhaling here into the roundness or the dome shape. Remember to let your breath come out of your mouth anytime you want to, to stay cool, just to reminding yourself that this is gonna be a cooling practice and it's done mindfully, maybe more slowly than usual. I'm gonna invite again, the use of a mantra. And that one is just simply Sat Nam. And I, I guess I would start with the sat on your cow pose, nam. Remember this one, S-A-T-N-A-M. It's just sat and nam. And it's just acknowledging yourself here and now. It's like places you hear. Here I am. This is what's true. This is all that's true is this moment and this experience right now. That's all we got. Sat nam. Just a very basic, simple way that yoga brings us into the present moment. The present experience. I love it. I use it all the time. A couple more. And, you know, this is just an invitation. Sat Nam. Maybe doesn't appeal to you. No, don't have any interest in that. Find your breath. And move through it the way you choose. I know, lots of repetition, but I think it's easier on the body when we can just slowly move through and really accomplish that just with a little more ease. Excellent, come on back up. Palms are gonna come together, hold it. Full body stretch, push your feet to the floor, squeeze the block. Lift up from your rib cage. Your rib cage is lifting you up. It's like you wanna get longer in your waistline area. You wanna get longer in the armpit chest. Inhale, exhale, bow at your heart. Inhale up, exhale, come into the T and I want you to stretch your hands open. Thumbs are pointing back, arms are held strongly with no bend in the elbow. Push your feet to the floor so your whole body is helping you create this T. We're gonna move into the neck work. And so I want you to turn your head from one side to the other and move it. So when you're turning, you're looking down, you're looking back, you're looking up, you're moving around from one side to the other. So stay, stay on one side for a few breaths and just focus, get your intention to be tender, loving care, awareness of your neck and its range of movement today, right now, how's it feeling? What if you discover as you're extending your arms and exploring this, that for you, it would be better to do this one arm at a time, that, you know, it's just too much. I can't keep a cooling breath going on while I've got both arms elevated. So that would be a modification you might choose. 
be sure to use both sides or go to both sides. I don't want to delay you, but be sure that you're thorough, that you're paying attention. See, for me, I need to necessarily hang out on one side more than the other by far. So that would be my strategy. Full breath in, full breath out. No tension in your mouth. When you feel like you've done your due diligence here, both sides, inhale all the way up and all the way down. Ananda, hum. We're just going to keep invoking that spirit of joyfulness within the body. Ananda, hum. Ananda, hum. Last time. Good. Let's lose the block, believe it or not. I'm all sweaty. How about you? Sweaty from the block there. And let's take a wider uh, angle here. So heels in, toes out. How wide you are is be depends on how your body likes to approach this. Don't get your feet too far away from the chair legs. You want pretty much a right angle with your knees bent. So that's, that's a good way to measure that. Let's squeeze the elbows into the waistline and just make some big circles. Start to notice your breath. When can you blow that exhale out? Just start to notice when you do. And that you're easily moving, but it's a big circle. And you feel how your body weight shifts from side to side, from front to back. You can feel it. Your head should feel real neutral. There's no, really no movement of the head. It's just coming along for the ride that your chest cavity is creating here. Next time you're in the center point, take a moment, press your feet to the floor, press, squeeze your elbows into your waist, lift your chest. No tension in your mouth, don't need it there. And now change the direction of your circle. And let it loosen up a little bit. Maybe even this could start to feel like there's some letting go going on. And that letting go is in service of unblocking and energy flow. Just in case we've been holding tension, we've been holding some, you know, problems, if you will, in our body, which we do. And we're going to let some of that go in terms of the body, the, the, the tension and that we created in our body as a result of our thoughts. Let that go. And the thing is, remember that phrase I like so well, any amount? I'm meeting in the middle here. Any amount that we can let go is going to be useful. So even if you're thinking, I'm not quite ready to let all of it go. You know, I'm still pissed off about something. Well, let go of what you can. And we'll see what happens. We're going to work the perineum now. Squeeze your elbows into your waistline. Push your feet like crazy. Push your feet. Now lift up the perineum. It's, the more we do it, I'll bet you literally feel yourself coming off the chair. I absolutely do. And how deep you want to be, how much of a fold, that's up to you. I'm a, I like a half lift that gives me all the strength I need. You do it the way you have found it to be the most powerful. Follow the inseam of your legs. So you're pulling in from you know, as much of your leg as you can have access to in terms of your awareness, your body-mind connection. You're trying to use those inner legs, those inner thighs kind of at the inseam space to pull up and in of the pelvic floor. This takes a lot of awareness. So let's stay with it, really concentrate. Squeeze and hold, this is worth our efforting. Remember, there's balance between ease and effort. We're using efforting in some parts of our body, but your neck doesn't have to be tight. Your face doesn't have to be tight. Your mouth, your shoulders. There's lots of areas of your body can, that can be in ease while you're doing this very strong work of toning your perineum. Great job, everybody. One more squeeze and hold. 
and then let's tumble down in the space between our legs and look down and underneath us. So if your legs are far enough apart that you can get your shoulders in between your legs, do that. Surrender the weight of the head. Again, this letting go experience that you're not engaging your neck. You're allowing your low back to stretch. Your neck is kind of like in traction now. Eyes wide open so that you feel your bearings. You keep your bearings, you know, right where you are, even though you're in this big inversion. Big belly breath. Make sure your belly is expanding. You're using the diaphragm muscle. Can you do one more time? Big breath. One hand at a time will come to your thighs. Squeeze your elbows into your waist. Meet me halfway up. Squeeze those elbows. Push your feet. Find that breath in and out. Pull your chin in towards your throat. So the back of the head, neck, and spine, as best you can figure out, is in alignment, in a diagonal line. Really push your feet. Feel the strength of your legs. And be sure to exhale out of your mouth, gently releasing heat. Inhale now, up now. We're going to carry ourselves up, palms together, overhead. Exhale as we bow to the heart. Inhale comes up and exhale is all the way down. Let's move through our joints now. Step your feet within hips distance apart. Let's get a hold of the leg. And so we can now start with moving through your uh, ankle, spinning around your foot. Five and five. Make five circles going one way and five the other. If you like to just kind of do it, like I'll do it, whatever. I don't, I'm not all about counting. I'm not gonna argue. Just get moving. Once you feel like you finished that work, then move into the knee joint. So now it's the whole lower leg, the shin bones. There's more than one shin bone. I always say, move your shin bone. There's actually more than one. So we're gonna spin that around five circles and then take that around the other way. So we've been very thorough about our lateral move of that knee joint. And then lift up, get a hold of your shin and pull it in, pull in, flex that foot. So you're pulling in and just breathing. So I want you to sort of pull yourself up towards your thigh and your thigh is pulling in towards your belly. Push that foot to the floor on your standing side, your, your grounding side. Lift up, lengthen the spine, flex that foot. Good, now we're gonna find the figure four. So you're just gonna rotate that around from your hug knee into the chest to your figure four. This is gonna be our way of moving into some, you know, loosening up and the joint of the hip. Just play with it. You kind of get the idea. From there, you just create it yourself. Let's move into the foot now. I want us to give a really uh, mindful and intentional now working the foot by massaging it. Catherine, who used to come to this class, whenever I would say out to, you know, what do, what do we want to work on? She'd always say, the feet. She loved it when we massaged our feet. Include your toes. If you can weave your fingers in between your toes, that would be great. TLC for your foot. You know, there's a lot of joints in your feet, so it's, it's appropriate that we're including our foot in this series that is warming up the joints or loosening up the joints. And we've got to keep our feet healthy and pliable or we will not have good balance as we just make our way through life as we age. Let's use no hands and arms to help get that foot back to the floor. Both feet now in alignment, not one ahead of the other. Sit up real tall, just come into mountain pose. 
before we go to the other side. Push your feet to the floor, lift your chest. Find that nice full breath in and out. And I'm gonna offer another mantra, simple, deep, then slow. Inhale deep, exhale slow. Real strong posture, we're always working on posture today. So we're bringing mind and body together. We're really thoughtful about our posture and how we're holding ourselves. And we're unblocking energy's flow every chance we get to let go what might be stored inside that's not serving us at all. All right, side two, we're gonna hop, get a hold of that leg. Oops, I went underneath it. And that'll help us to start spinning around through the ankle. This is the one where I like to use the heaviness of the leg so that my arms, my bicep muscles get a little chance to work out. It's not huge, but it's not nothing. Five and five or your own willy nilly movement. So you're finding your own way. When you've completed the work of your ankle, then stop that movement and move it into your knee joint. So that's the shin bones that are gonna do this circular movement. Five and five would be nice. Good, and then let's hug that knee into the chest, grab hold of your shin, pull it way in, flex your foot. Flex your foot, pull in, real good posture here. And then move into figure four. So you're gonna go from hugging that knee into the chest to angling it over into the figure four. If there's anything you wanna to add to that, use your own creative juices here. Find out what would work better for you or, or the challenge that you have come to enjoy here. Time for the feet. So we're gonna move into tender loving care for these feet. So prop your leg into that figure four and that'll give you access to your toes and to the whole of your foot. So don't, you know, be very thorough. Try to get as thorough as you can. Weave your fingers between your toes, spread, make some space in there. Bend them, move them around, you know, you get it. Be mindful of your breath, just a quick reminder. While you're doing this, notice your breath. Beautiful, no hands now, just come out of that figure four by bringing feet to the floor. Let's try that. Oh, I know what I wanna do. <laughs> See, I'm changing gears. We're on the very front side of the chair. I'm going to scoot just a little bit over to the side so that I can create 90-90. Both legs are in a 90 degree angle. 90 degree in the front leg, the one that's facing forward, I'm facing forward, and 90 degree on the leg that I've pulled off into an external rotation. Let's get our block handy. I'm just going to stick it out there in case it looks seems like something we might need. So starting here where you're forward facing, hold the chair in any way that serves you so that both legs are able to stay put in their 90 degree position. Push your feet to the floor and be kind of fussy. Keep looking at it, keep checking to see if that's what you're doing. If you're creating a 90 degree angle and you're holding, there's another 90 degree angle and that's the space between your legs, between your thigh bones. Try a little bit of a twist. Don't work too hard at it, but just turn away from your legs. Press your feet to the floor. Keep your legs in the 90-90 and just a gentle twist as you breathe in and out. And then come back to center 
Now we're going from orienting ourselves to the front leg. Let's turn, make our front leg be this other leg. So turn yourself entirely to face the other leg, the other knee. So you still have your legs in a 90 degree angle. And use your chair in any way that helps you position yourself. Press your feet to the floor. Lift up your chest, because I all in me, in my body, this already feels like a twisting action, so I'm not going to add to it. See if you can get that back arm straight and it's alongside you. See if your chair will accommodate that. It's a nice kickstand of support. Good. Now let's stay on this side, and this is where I'm thinking the block might be useful. I'm going to put it on my half halfway upside and my hands going there. So full extension of my arm, palm down. I'm pushing my leg into my arm and my arm is pushing back. So there's a little, a little dynamic tension going on there. Wrap the back arm around you, wrap, wrap, wrap it around your back. Turn your head in such a way that it feels neutral. Now see if you can find both sit bones on that chair. So you're back into the awareness of your pelvis, breathing in and breathing out. Let's take our deep, slow mantra into this, breathing deep and slow. Deep and slow. Does it make a difference if you press your feet really hard into the floor or if just a casual position works okay. See what you like better. Good, let's come back up. And then we're just gonna switch sides. We'll kind of keep our block handy. Kind of maybe a scooch over this direction just a bit. 90, 90 on this side. So take a moment, get kind of fussy. You want a 90 degree angle. I found that I was, when I was playing with this before we started class, if I was too far back in the chair, this was a very uncomfortable. So I really wanted to uh, remind myself, you know, to tell you coming forward on the chair is a better deal. So start by orienting yourself forward facing like we have been throughout most of our practice today. So forward facing and however you need to hold that, how your arms are going to be placed and how you're able to kind of support yourself in this forward facing position. Push your, press your feet to the floor and you know your legs might start to collapse but you're just gonna keep opening, keep inviting them to stay strong and open and exhaling every time out of your mouth might be a good reminder. This is the opportunity now to twist. Gentle twist away from your legs. And then find your sit bones, feel like you're balanced in your pelvis. You can even feel the length of your spine. See if you can breathe through the length of your spine now for a breath or two. Exhale it out of your mouth. Deep and slow. Excellent, let's start to unwind from that. And now just shifting our orientation to the other leg. So keep, keep the, the front leg in its 90 degree angle and now we're turning ourselves. So it's, we're completely facing the other side of the room now and using your chair however you want to, to orient yourself this way so that your chest bone is sort of in line with your knee. It's in line with the way your toes are pointed. Keep your spine long, full breath in and out. You start to feel your leg collapse toward the center, just gently invite it to come back up for your 90 degree angle. One more full breath. 
Exhale it out, this letting go of the breath. And then this is when we're gonna use our block. And so this is where we get a little dynamic tension going on. Placing your hand on the block, your, your lengthened arm now is gonna press against your leg and your leg is gonna press right back. The top arm is gonna wrap around you, wrap around your back. You know what, on this side, not as flexible, I'm gonna move it to the higher side. It's much more accessible to me. So I moved my block higher. Now let's deepen that breath. Remember to hold your head in a way that feels neutral to you. So you're really managing the weight of your head. Should be a softness about your mouth. Good, one more breath. And let's bring ourselves up. I'm gonna tuck that block underneath, come all the way up, and let's get both legs back together. All right, time to come into some standing poses. So I'm gonna have you scoot your feet underneath and come up. Try to keep your legs together, as close together as you can. It's just a little part of our balance challenge, bringing your legs a little closer together. And our first standing pose is going to be a balance. So bringing your legs as close together as you can, squeezing it so you feel like you've got a mermaid leg here. Pull in the belly, get your shoulders back and down. Start with mountain pose, so palms face forward. Now find your good posture. So you're not lifting your head up. You know, the top of the head is supposed to be in line with your tailbone. So if you dropped a plumb line, you know, you've got that length of the spine. This one includes a little soft bend of the knee so we don't lock in. You wanna feel the whole surface of your foot. Make sure you feel the ball of your foot, the toes of your foot as well as the heel of your foot. So the whole surface of your foot is part of your awareness. See if you can close your eyes. Excellent, let's open the eyes now. And here's the balance, inhale up, palms come together, squeeze the legs, hold it. And then the exhale is gonna to be to take a turn with your arms in a T position, palms face up, thumbs point back. Inhale up, palms together, big long body here, all hugging toward the midline. And when you're ready, extend arms to a twist, palms up, thumbs point back. See if you can do that one more time on each side. Take your time, easy with your neck. There shouldn't be any strain in your neck. If you're looking for stability, I say squeeze your legs together a little bit, maybe bend your knees a tad, and that might give you just the stability you were missing. Exhale completely, come back up and all the way down at the heart. Inhale up, look up if that works. Exhale, take a big stroke to come all the way down. Let's take our wider stance, our more traditional mountain pose. So for some shoulder rolls standing up. So just move your shoulders, pull the belly in. Shoulders are rolling back and back. So stay with the same movement. Elbows stay close to the body. And then change the direction of that. Good. Next stretch is going to be for the calf. So I want you to come to your chair seat in that tabletop position where your palms are on the chair and you're very close to it so that your shoulders are right above your wrists. Take a pause right here, everything's straight, straight legs, straight arms. And you know, you're trying to lengthen through the spine. So that feels, though it's got its natural curve, you get the idea, it's kind of straight. Deepen the breath. 
just a pure tabletop position. Step your left foot back and keep that left heel down. So you've just scissored your legs apart. Keep that left heel down so the back foot is down. And then let your right knee bend toward the chair. So we can do this. If that's not giving you a calf stretch on your back leg, if you're not feeling any kind of a stretch, I'm gonna say you need a, a wider step. You need to take a little more step back with that back foot so that you can feel that in your calf. This can be held here with palms on the chair seat, or you could bring yourself up so that you're using the backrest also to hold you up. So all the way down, hey, and there's a third option for those of you who are interested, that would be forearms down. Instead of palms on the chair seat, forearms have come to the chair seat. All of this, while we have our legs scissored, one knee is bent and we can feel a stretch in the calf of the back leg. Let's deepen the breath. Let's keep that knee bent and bring yourself all the way up. One knee bent forward, back leg straight, hips are square. Our balance challenge is simply bringing palms together at the heart. Steady yourself. If you choose to have a little bit more challenge, keep those palms together as they just come up and overhead. Nothing else, palms together, up and overhead, steady. Find your drishti, get your eyes focused on something. Exhale out of your mouth. Let's come all the way down to our tabletop again. Step your foot forward. And then I want you to do some squatting as a way of resetting your body. Squat down, see if you can get into your hips a little bit, stretch your thighs, and of course, moving up and down in bent knee, it makes sure it's okay with your knees. Mostly you gotta pull your butt weight back so you're not so heavy in those knee joints. And it usually works fine, but if your knees say no, simply don't do it. Find a different way to reset your body. We can stay right here. We don't need to move for side two. So we're back on our tabletop, straight arms, straight legs, straight spine, I'm saying. Just feel strong and straight. Now the right foot steps back, scissor that, and we start to bend into the left knee. You're looking for a stretch of your calf. That back leg is gonna stretch if we can keep that heel down. So if you're not finding a stretch, it's just not, you're not, then it's probably that you've gotta take a bigger step back. So we can do it in one of three ways, upright, which actually might be the most potent in terms of the stretch of that, of that calf now that I'm in it. Palms on the chair, just like we were in our tabletop, or that you bring your forearms to the chair seat. Let's deepen the breath. Let those exhales remind you to let go. What, we don't have to name it. We don't have to figure out what, what am I supposed to be letting go of? Just let go, release the energy blocks that might exist in your body that you want to just free them up, let it go so that you're better able to find ananda, the joy. We're up right now. We've got our upright position. This is our balance pose. Palms come together up and overhead. Straight arms. Our head is just held right between those upper arms. Full breath in. Full breath out. Both feet really grounded. Inhale, exhale out your mouth. Let's come back to the chair seat. This time, step back into a down dog. Keep your hands on the chair seat. Let's just stretch it out. Make sure your feet are straight, parallel. 
tuck your chin in towards your throat, stretch your legs. Exhale through your mouth. Press your toes just for good measure here. Press your toes more than ever to the floor. And let's start walking toward the chair. Bend your knees quite a bit, round your back, keep your head down. And then when you come up, it's one vertebrae at a time, just standing up in mountain pose. Palms face forward, straighten out those feet. We can use the chair now for another balance idea, and that would be simply a floating tree. So we're going to shift our weight to the leg that's nearest the chair so we can root down on that side. And the other leg is into its 90 degree. You know, our leg is well practiced today in creating a 90 degree angle. So here's a good one that you simply allow that floating leg to be balanced on one strong leg on the floor. If you're looking for more, you might rotate it to the side, but it never comes down. It's not going to touch your leg. You're going to keep it floating. Uh, it's my way. Find a focal point, and then come on back, both feet to the floor, shake that out a little bit, kind of bounce it out. In the meantime, I'm gonna move myself. You might not need to at all. I'll move so you can see what's happening on this side. So now you've shifted, so to side two, your other leg is the standing leg, your other leg is rooting for you, and you have a right angle as you lift up that other leg. So you've created a right angle. You can hold it right there. If you want to continue to express various ways of doing it, you could rotate it off to the side. Try to lift up, lengthen through that side that you're standing on. I'm trying to wean myself from the chair. so I'm not leaning into it. Exhale out of your mouth, full breath in, and then we exhale it out, letting go. Let's bring that leg back to center and back to the floor. Shake that out. You know, in service of releasing energy, blocked energy, there's nothing better than tapping. So I'm gonna finish this up with tapping. So just find a comfortable way to stand here that you feel nice and balanced. And we'll start with the top of the head. Fingertips are just tapping. And your idea here is releasing. And I'm gonna say, as you're doing this, you're gonna choose. You know why I said satnam? That's just me reminding you we're here and now. And I'll just start moving. I'm gonna just find different ways to tap. You don't have to worry that you're doing it wrong. You can't do it wrong. Satnam might be what you're kind of saying to yourself here. Or if you're like me, you're all about cultivating joy, ananda hum, ananda hum. So we're tapping. Include the length of your arms, top and bottom. And maybe somehow on the very you know, depth of you, you're thinking ananda hum. If there's a particular area of your body where you hold tension, be sure you're tapping away in that area. Go under your armpits. This is good for the lymph nodes, your lymph glands under there. Just tap and sort of like a little slap. Belly down the front of the legs. Up the side of your legs. Then you're gonna include the back of the legs. So you've been really thorough all around, inside, outside, front and back. Little belly, 
chest bone, temples, top of the head. Let's find our mountain pose. Pull the belly in, feel your feet to the floor. Soften the knees just a bit, close your eyes. Breathe all the way through your breath cycle. Feel the length of your body. In other words, you're just very thoroughly engaged in the body-mind connection. You wanna know what your hands feel like. You're curious about the whole length of your arm, how your knees are, what's the calf feel like right now? How about the heel? You're just really thorough and curious about your whole body. When we bring our mind to that, it's an act of self-love. There's a tenderness about that attention. Maybe you're remembering to exhale out of your mouth. Every once in a while, you're, not, you're right there. Oh, yeah. Let's open the eyes. Get used to that. Inhale, palms together overhead. Let's try one more little twist. That's just opening into that T shape. Our feet are a little further apart than we did when we did it a minute ago, so it might be a little easier access. Palms stay facing up and back. Inhale, exhale, bow. Inhale up and exhale, sweep your arms all the way down. Time for Shavasana now. So if you are one that gets a second chair, this would be your time to do that. I've got to get a drink of water. This is our time to just start adjusting. Transitioning into our Shavasana time, our meditation. So get very comfortable, very well supported. And you start to just notice how your body starts to shift in terms of how your breath is flowing, how your body is softening. There's a letting go. Maybe it's pretty subtle to begin with. Let's just see if you can notice that. Letting go. And I hope you're feeling really satisfied that this was enough. You know how we are. Uh, did I do enough? Am I enough? That, that your practice of mindfulness and your breath awareness and your maybe ease through the joints, you know, it's just a loving response to the heat, you know, that we're going to cool ourselves and be restorative in nature, be a little more um, uh, mindful instead of, you know, quite putting quite so much focus on really energizing the body. We'll do that. We'll do that in many practices and it's all great fun, but not, not in this heat. It's better for us to stay in a more calming, reflective time. We deserve that as well. If you enjoyed that mantra, excuse me, that mudra, the way we held our hands, which was the inner smile, the gesture of the inner smile, you might choose that that's how your hands happen to land on your lap. And as you rest, leaning against that chair, you have that smile on your face, which is all for you. Breathing in and breathing out through the mouth or however it feels good and natural to you. So if your hands don't feel restful holding that mudra, that's okay. Then just sort of softly let it go. And remember this one. We've used this many times. Calm and ease. 
Inhale, calm. Exhale, ease. So your mind is instructing your body. Calm and ease. There's a softness of the belly. There's a softness of the shoulders and the facial muscles. Inhale, calm. Exhale, ease. Stay with that. Relax your shoulders. Relax that part of your body that often is a, is a point where you carry tension. It seems to be a holding space for tension and irritability. See if you can go there lovingly without judgment to let go, to unblock some of that energy. Let it flow. Let it leave you. Any amount. Good, let's take a big breath in through the nose and exhale it out of your mouth with the ah sound. Inhale and sigh it out, ah. Flutter your eyes open, let's give a little tension to the neck. So maybe you're bringing your hands to your, where your neck and shoulders come together and you can give it a massage. Maybe your preference is to simply move your head from side to side to feel the stretch of that. Whatever feels very well supported, very easy to access, and yet feels very much uh, that it's useful for your neck now. All right. So inhale with me, palms come together overhead, right where we started. Just a gentle touch of fingertips together. Look up as we draw our big inhale. Exhale, blow it out your mouth as your hands land at your heart. Inhale up, look up. Exhale, we share this beautiful energy with our communities. The sense of wholeness, the sense of ease, this letting go. Excellent. Palms come to the heart. We bow to ourselves and we bow to each other. Namaste, my friends. And thank you for joining me as always.